this now. Uh, and maybe it would be good to start with a quick introduction for me. So we are most, uh, most of us know each other, but there are some new people. So a quick intro would be great. Uh, okay, I will start with Natalie because she's on my first screen, which is the second Juliana for your information. It's <laughs> labeled that way. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Natalie and um, I'm, I'm based in New Zealand and I work with Juliana uh, on One Up One Down, which is the near peer mentor matching platform for women in business and technology. Um, and we have a proposal to bring a woman um, into Kidano and support them through proposals using mentorship. Thank you. Uh, Yaram? Yeah, sure. You're um, based in Geneva, uh, part of Cardano for Climate, spending a lot of time with Melanie every day. Uh, through cyber uh, <laughs> space, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and really want to see how we can uh, build new things. And obviously, key part of that is changing the world. Also, I mean, we need to change also the balance. So, if you want to do it. And thank you very much for your very strong support because you very strong support to bring more women in Cardano. Uh, thank you for this. I'm Marie. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mary. I'm not in Catalyst for a long time, but I'm working on the, um, an artistic uh, kind of artistic community or ecosystem. And I'll, I'm also a part from the Leadership Academy. So I try to find a little bit my way in the community. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, Dana? Oh, sorry, so do I pronounce your name properly? Dana or Dana? It's uh, Dana. Dana, okay, cool. Dana, yeah. So hi, my name is Dana, and I've been a part of the Cardano Catalyst community since the beginning of Fund 7. I just found out it just prior to that. And so just been involved since then, just continuing to progress in my engagement with the community and meeting other people and connecting with their projects. Uh, I have a proposal in the miscellaneous challenge. Um, it's called Cardano Film Studios. And uh, we're trying to build blueprints and <clears throat> we're trying to build blueprints and um, also build community for independent filmmakers to utilize Cardano for their film production process. Um, and we have a, our first film iteration is, um, we're in the funding stage right now. So hope to start pre-production soon, but definitely making connections with other creatives in the space for that Cardano Film Studio Collective. So really excited to be here and just be a part of the process and see how this is my first full, like from Genesis to voting, to seeing how even the community outside of Catalyst reacts to the governance system. It's been like a really cool experience and just making me fall in love with Cardano even more. So. I'm happy to awesome. be here. Thank you. Uh, sorry, um, I think my cat broke something downstairs. So Nat, could you just take the lid and see what's going on downstairs? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, sure. Um, so who have we got next? Maybe uh, Dean? Yeah, um, I'm, my name is Dean Taylor. I'm, I work out of Utah and have been involved in open source for a very, very long time. Um, found out about Cardano um and uh and got the passion came back and so i'm trying to build bridges if you will from a lot of my previous experiences that are outside of cardano there's a lot of people inside of cardano and there's a lot of things that's happening but there's a lot of people outside from my previous experiences in in the venture capital world that are wanting to try and find out how they might be able to come in and participate so i'm kind of building that bridge and finding how to do that while trying to also understand this community and making sure that I'm being much, very much aware of what's happening inside the community. But again, it's just a phenomenal opportunity to be working inside with people with Cardano and what's going on with Catalyst. It's just, uh, it, breathes, it breathes life back into the technology world and the reason that we exist, so. 
That's great. Thanks, Dean. Uh, if we go to Melanie next. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I changed your name for you. That's, wow, it's the power of being co-host. Thank you. Um, really excited to be here. I've been in Catalyst since the tail end of Fund 4, lurked through Fund 5, uh, joined a uh, submission um, finalized in Fund 6, and Dor said in the town hall, if you got this wild idea, just do it. And ever since that point in time, I've been just doing it. And that's where uh, we put in our first proposal. I was working on it till two o'clock in the morning, um, uh, climate change, the challenge. And since then, this big community has grown out of it to the point where the snails are taking over and we will, we'll, we'll get to the point where we all recognize that we are all part of Cardano for climate. There's, there's so many, cool connections, so many parts of this ecosystem that are growing and coming together. It's nobody um, saying, I own this idea, I own this platform, I own this, but we're, we're just evolving into this bigger picture. No idea what it'll turn into, just absolutely thrilled to be here. And I'm also really thrilled to see you, Juliana, you know, come in, you know, you connected with me and I couldn't really do anything to help you, but here you took the initiative and you just did it and you've come in and this is where, where it begins. So really excited to see where this, where this goes and continues to evolve. Thank you for uh, letting me be part of it. Thank you, that's, that's very nice. Um... So uh, we, uh, we've, Melanie and Dean have introduced themselves. So I'll hand back to you now, Juliana, to facilitate the rest. Yes. Uh, Megan? Hey, um, I am still just kind of getting new to things or getting familiar with things. I only came to the first Zoom meeting two weeks ago, but I've kind of been patchy uh, in and out. So I'm just kind of getting into the swing of things and yeah. Cool. Uh, Daniel, do you want to introduce yourself? I, I think most people know you, but <laughs> just in case. I, I think I spoke enough today, but um, I, you know, I've been around for quite a while. And I'm just trying to, to facilitate us all in, in, in a certain direction that we can all co-live peacefully and collaborate peacefully and so that we can kickstart the big big premise of what this year will be about and that's Voltaire so um, we're, we're doing a lot of like work here that we're testing and, and figuring out how things work in the real life and then we're just going to be trying to see if we can apply it on a, on a bigger picture in a bigger big, uh, bigger scale so I thank you everyone for playing the part here today um, Scott nice to see you again Hello. I don't know what was the, the intro question. I mean, I've been, uh, I don't know, I've been here for a while. Uh, this topic interests me. I was here, I think, with the last meetup that we had pertaining to uh, onboarding women to Cardano. I think it's an important topic. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Andrew? Hello, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. My name is Angela. I'm joining you from Nairobi, Kenya, East Africa. Um, I joined Project Catalyst in Fund 5 and have been lurking ever since. Um, I think we're all here. I hope we're all here to to make an impact on the next century in terms of the amount of involvement women are able are, are <laughs> the involve the amount of involvement women are involved in, which is not English at all. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, we as half of the population of the planet have have plenty of things to say, and I hope we're able to to say them in the next 
Did I make any sense? Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, Len? Hi. Um, um, I'm an old guy, both in age and having been around here. Um, I'm a proposer. I've been a proposer. Uh, my interest is um, bringing the business side of things to everything we do. And in that sense, uh, looking at the future of catalysts from a more practical rather than a um, theoretical way. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of missing quite a bit. Uh, an example of that is I have a proposal in with, um, along with another fellow uh, in fund seven in miscellaneous challenge to, to create teaming agreements. Um, because I see a lot of people putting in proposals with strangers. They don't have teaming agreements between them. One of the, one of the team, let's say there's two or three people together is gonna to get the money. <clears throat> that person, depending upon where they are, is going to have a tax event. Uh, how they share that tax obligation um, with the other people is questioned. And we've seen, we saw in fund, I guess, four or three, uh, the NFT DAO team uh, fractured and split apart because people who were doing work weren't getting compensated and they didn't have a real agreement ahead of time. <clears throat> so that's an example of the practical side that I come with. Um, and I think without speaking about women as, <clears throat> as a class, um, I think there is a huge, uh, uh, actually this idea came from Allison, um, there's a huge uh, opportunity to bring women in as community advisors. Um, uh, women uh, housewives or who, who are working or who are not working for whom um, the, the uh, compensation or rewards um, would be meaningful to, their, to their, um, uh, their household income. And so I and another uh, lady are going to uh, be putting in a proposal in Fund 8 um, to address that issue. Thank you. That is really insightful, I think. Um, very helpful for us to know. Uh, and uh, actually, yes, they, we think uh, mentorship uh, is a very powerful key, not only for connecting women, uh, but uh, also for this uh, gap that you mentioned that um, could stronger the teams. Uh, Nat, do you, uh, do you want to continue with uh, some of the questions that we have prepared? Can I, can I ask one question, um, yeah. Juliana? Uh, Len, what is the name of your proposal and what challenge are you in? I, I think I already reviewed your proposal, but I just want to make sure I take a look at it again. Uh, in, in Fund 7, it's a miscellaneous challenge, and it's called Create Teaming Agreements. Basically, a pretty small proposal uh, yeah. to just produce a couple of templates uh, that people can can apply, let's say, conveniently or easily to their to their own um, proposals in Fund Eight. Okay, you said it's create what? Create teaming agreements. Teaming agreements. Uh, teaming agreement templates, maybe. Uh, the idea okay. is to, to to make templates. Yeah, we're in, uh, yeah we're working Sorry. on. Go ahead. Sorry, Len, the, the mic, your mic is really hard to hear. Uh, maybe you could drop your link in the chat there as well. Okay, maybe I had it uh, buried, but I'll do that. <clears throat> well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I just uh, want to make sure I think that that's a super important thing. And um, we've been dealing with our lawyers on our business back end as we're doing some partnerships with some other people in Cardano. So I just want to, I want to review that one again. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so so um, we wanted to really get an understanding of people's relationship with mentorship, because um, uh, one of the solutions we see is a way to enable more women to 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 participate in commun in Cardano and feel confident proposing, putting forward proposals and filling the roles of leadership is through mentorship. So we're really curious to know um, what people's experience with mentorship is and whether you've, you've, you have mentors within the Cardano community already. So I think we, we, if we're happy, we can start with, with that question. Uh, yes, let me go ahead. 
Yeah, in fun, again, I think it's fun three. <clears throat> I volunteer to be a mentor and I'm one of the, the volunteer mentors to a proposal and um, uh, for free. Uh, it became quite a, an involved relationship because I essentially was, was helping the people to, um, the team to uh, look at their, look at their weaknesses and, and come up with some ideas to the extent that um, I was, uh, I disqualified for myself from, from voting as a CA uh, in that challenge because it became quite involved. <clears throat> and I think that a mentor almost, well, a mentor could be a lot of different things, but uh, let's say on the, on the most involved level where I was, you actually become part of the team and you're inside and outside. Uh, you learn a lot about it. And, and the idea is to try not to, not to pass judgment on the proposal, but you, um, you get, it, it, I think if you're doing your job right, um, you get quite involved. And so the mentor, like I said, I think has to disqualify themselves or recuse themselves from any um, uh, public advocation. Yeah, I think Dean was uh, fourth, and then Dana. Um, my background is um, I do a lot of mentoring since I've been involved with um, a number of startup companies. I've raised significant amount of capital with organizations. If you were, if you actually look in the the, there are two proposals we've got there. One of them is the proposal on the mentorship um, in Fund Seven, and then also the uh, Catalyst Leadership Academy. Those are the two things I'm involved in. Uh, the, the biggest reason for my background or the things that I'm really interested in is, is that because um, having been involved with a number of startups, having been through capital raising, having had a number of those experiences, a lot of people have extreme creativity and they have this brilliant capacity to bring ideas, but they really don't understand that if not careful, it could be literally ripped out from underneath of them. And I've had experiences in my personal career where I've been successful in both being uh, taking companies into different financial statuses, but also being involved with um, as the as I shared in the, the meeting the other day with some people. Um, there's a statement that's called "Founders Losers and Finders Keepers," and that really is the case when you start building out companies. And so, um, as we grow outside of Catalyst and we are going to grow outside of Catalyst. There is going to need this ability for people to understand the rules that are happening out there in the market structure, not just what's happening on in, in, in Cardano and Catalyst, but why is it, you know, why is it that um, Horowitz has brought in one point, I think $1.2 billion into a new fund. Um, and some of the big funds that are happening here in Utah, these are players that, you know, um, when you start going to them to raise capital, they want to know that your not only is your passion there, but you also the business model exists. And so um, that's one of the reasons why I've been involved in um, getting involved with startups and different types of organizations. And uh, so for me, um, there's just this intrinsic um, capacity, this love, this uh, passion to help and bring uh, companies as they go through different processes of building out markets and stuff. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. In the early days of Linux, what we couldn't get done in the early days of Linux is now the opportunity happening right now. We open source started, and as I was involved in that, and what began back then um, got, while it continued to grow, it was very, very difficult to be successful because we weren't necessarily in charge of how the markets could, we could enable the markets to grow. That is the one thing that Cardano and Project Catalyst brings and others bring to this table is that there's this capacity to grow what started back in the 90s and now literally is a a new emerging business model. And I think Catalyst, after evaluating a lot of different things is, and Cardano is the place to be. So it's uh, it's right 
in the pocket. It know it's it's growing to where the market makers are going to go. Dan, do you want to jump? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, Sorry, what? Oh, what did you say? Did you uh, go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, I wish I could take Len and Dean and like make a baby out of them um, and merge you guys together, <laughs> you know, with the legal aspect and then with what you're set. So this really, um, it's kind of the mentorship aspect of it. It's, it's, I want to get back to that for a second, but what you were saying, Dean, this whole blockchain technology the whole premise behind it obviously is everyone's trying to get on board, but like for your average person who's hearing about it and who's thinking like, oh, this is gonna be the new wave where people, you know, through DAOs or through decentralization, like we're not gonna be having strings tied to like big capitalists, you know, big like, and I'm I'm not against capitalism, just like big like capital firms that are owning like you know, 75% of a business or putting up funds. So like, but obviously in this day and age where not everyone's proposal is getting funded on Catalyst and things like that, we still need funds to make sure that some of these good ideas get brought to market or some of these people who have ideas for businesses can do what they need to do. Is there, do you see like a model where people are, because I mean, that's kind of, you know, behind Solana, there's so much VC money behind it. Do you see kind of like opportunities for people who are trying to get things started, trying like a woman trying to get a business started who wants to maybe she needs some of that um, VC money up front, but putting together partnerships that once they get their capital back, like putting together agreements where you can buy your investors out so that it still stays to the original vision of, you know, hey, we don't want to be owned mostly by a you know a venture capitalist investment firm um and our venture venture capitalist or funds willing to participate in that type of model um so that's my question uh for you on that but i will speak de juliana more to the mentoring part of it before you know um I, i'll i'll speak to my experience in mentorship um, I really, I didn't even know that there was availability to have mentors throughout this catalyst process. It was more of me just like reaching out to people who have skills and saying, can I steal an hour or two of your time? Um, and really making sure that, that I respected their time, had questions ahead of time prepared and basically just gleaned from them when I could, but there was never somebody who was kind of like checking in or me feeling like, oh, I'm gonna continue to like, you know, have have a eye on my my progress the whole time so that, you know, because there's a lot of people spread really thin right now, especially in Catalyst, especially people who have that knowledge and experience, they're talking to like 20 different projects trying to help them. So. If there is a pool of mentors who's specifically designated to sticking with people throughout, like where are, is there like some place where that's advertised? Um, and if not, uh, is this something that Catalyst is talking about? I, I, I don't know, I'm still new. So there's two things there, one for uh, Dean and then what I just said about going towards the mentorship part of it. So. The, the question that you originally, there's a number of questions you asked, but Dana, the answer, the answer to your question is absolutely yes. There's different ways of being able to set up financial structures. One of them is creating a nonprofit structure organization where you, um, um, individuals that are, I, I'm gonna use the term market makers. People don't really understand that concept so much, but having a nonprofit organization allows third party, large third party organizations to get involved, donate funds and help build the market. And so um, and so what they'll do is that allows them to test and get into the water and come back out um, on the corporate side, depending upon the type of environment you're setting at. And I would be strongly telling you being out of 
Nevada's got a, you know, you know that Nevada's got a great business structure. I will tell you that I've taken my companies and I've moved them all to the Wyoming because there are certain things out of Wyoming that are far better and far more protective than the Nevada Corp, even though most of my companies are out of Nevada. So when you're looking at doing that kind of a structure, there are certain things, right, that um, uh, um, venture people are looking to do. They'll come in with a seed. And um, there are two types of investor structures right now. Ones are um, quick to fail. And they're basically throwing money in to see how people will begin to execute. And then they'll bring you in additional dollars and start moving forward. In this blockchain space that you're referring to, it's a general catch-all term. So what people are needing is how do I remove, how do I get and remove the inefficiencies in the market? And this is one of the things that um, people are really trying to understand. So any kind of a market structure that is training or teaching or bringing people um, along the path is going to be very, very successful as they transition into the main markets. There are, and, and let me just kind of describe it and from there. Take a look, let's say there's these four different levels. There's, a, there's this product level. And we would know that product level to be ADA. Everybody may know about Cardano and ADA and people are getting involved in Cardano and ADA. In the open source structures and what happens is, is that eventually if they're successful, things will move from a product either into a community structure or into an industry. And where we're moving right now is into the community structure. And this is why Catalyst is being so successful. It's in those transition spots. The one between ADA going from a product into a community that people really need their hands being held. But when the community finally does take off and people begin to see business models succeed, that's when it moves to an industry. And so as you build out the structures and the VCs and the people are looking at, they're looking at how you transition from this product into the community structure and into this industry. Now, what Cardano brings to the marketplace that is very, very, has not happened a lot is in that that industry begins to bring a whole new economic model. So depending upon where you position your market structure, the answer is absolutely. And then you retain the rights to take derivative works or you return the rights to, uh, and making things open and you continue to innovate but it's in those transitioning stages where the people are looking for. So sorry for kind of rambling, but yes, there are different, definitely ways of setting this up and also to, um, to do it in such a way that you can move along those paths and be able to grow as you wanting to grow. So hope I answered the question for you. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I just, I just, you know, we don't want to take the legacy system and just put it on the blockchain. And then have a bunch of monopolies and you know the dow jones on the so yes thank you yeah thank you i mean and everything i mean yeah i mean the discussion is about mentorship but i mean we see a part of the problem right up today first of all the, in terms of women and why we are here right why we are in this room so they are part of a problem they are focusing on the next unicorn which not but it might not be the right ecosystem we want to promote why not have thousand successful companies instead of one unicorn, uh, right? And have many more women in them. I mean, but I'm not, it's not about we see them, I'm just saying they're part of the problem up to now. Because if we see 20 years of innovation, we see not, not many women, or oh, less women than men in innovation, there is a challenge. Uh, mentorship, uh, um, but anyway, we can just discuss that a lot of, uh, of for long. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we try to do at least in Catalyst with Cardano for Climate is uh, basically, yeah, I mean, through the process, our, one of our goals is to help uh, climate-related proposals uh, improve. So we kind of, we have, uh, and basically get funded and improve. And actually in Fund 7, there's about 50, which is incredible already. Uh, so everyone is welcome to come and we have weekly meetings and if we catch anyone or if we, I mean, we really try to escort them and we will try to do even better in Fund 8. Um, yeah, how to kind of maybe do the CA process before the CA process somehow <laughs> with the proposals. Uh, so we are really trying to work closely with the, with the proposals and, and reach out to people and escort people. Um, yeah, and we try to do it as a community somehow. 
if it makes sense. Um, so it's not even one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, I mean, I've, I've been working with startup for many years as a mentor and also incredible woman entrepreneur startup, which is, I'll share it with you here. She's going very fast. Um, yeah, I mean, but I think really we need to be, how, how we are building an ecosystem which would be more welcoming to women to come and participate and and the mentorship would be, I think, important, big part of that, in my view, uh, to kind of welcome them hey, and kind of explain the process. And yeah, so it's very welcome what you're doing in your proposal. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, that's that's Great, absolutely. Um, there are two people in the room that haven't been introduced, Dimitri and Eric. Uh, Dimitri, we want to just give a shout who you are. Yeah, my name is Dimitri, so I'm in Sri Lanka. And uh, so the question was about mentorship. So I've been a business coach and a life coach for some time. Um, so I have helped people both in particular areas, not every aspect of business, but more in the marketing and sales side. Um, life coaching, of course, is a vast area, so a lot of uh, involvement there. But here the question was about how uh, women entrepreneurs, so particularly in the areas of uh, sales, marketing, uh, strategy, these are the kind of areas that have helped people uh, in business. All right, uh, cool. And Eric? Only if he was able to. Yeah, and Patricia, uh, Dimitri is joining us at 2 a.m. in the morning or 3 a.m. in the morning, which is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, last, uh, the week before, uh, there was a, um, mentioned from someone uh, who was in Asia and their problems were very serious because their timing was uh, not like all the meetings in Kardar was not aligned with their timing and they were saying that uh, the whole country was not able to join most of the meetings because most of them they sleep uh, which uh, I very much appreciate that um, okay um, I don't think Eric will be able to um, join with the microphone but if you are happy to introduce in the chat. That would be awesome. Uh, Scott, you raised your hand before I saw you. <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to, I decided to withdraw the question. It was going to be a question to Dean about uh, Gitcoin and what he thinks about their OSS. Uh, um, I don't know what their process that they're trying to fund OSS. Yeah, so right. Um, there's going to be a lot of different breakoffs, right, that are going to continue to grow and learn, right? And so what will eventually happen, right, on that structure is when we begin to see the, the continuing community build, that's what's going to make that really, really strong, right? If you think of, look, of all the distributions that came into play, when I first started, the ones that are now the plays, they don't even exist now. So I, I have a question. Well, um, so did you, Liana, I, I know that we've been exchanging emails back and forth and I do want to set up a, a call. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I do want to get a call set up between and whoever else on this, on this, um, you know, if there's any women or anybody else who wants to join us, but I would love to get like a Zoom call going with um, Allie from Cardano Women. She is already starting to put YouTubes together that are helping to educate on um, just like the ecosystem, how to do a wallet on blockchain stuff. Cause I had, I had sent um, DJ Liana for those that don't know, a suggestion about, you know, a way of onboarding more women and also helping to, to educate on Cardano, creating some sort of, you know, course like a blockchain 101 where we taught where women are from Cardano, and even possibly we could even reach out to other people on other blockchains to get them involved and then use it as a platform. It's hosted by Cardano, but 
we are trying to educate women in general on blockchain and how to use it, what it means, what the different blockchains mean. And then we're able to um, highlight what Catalyst is doing. Because I think that, that it's really special how you're able to, if you have an idea, there's this treasury out there that's voted on by the whole community and you can get involved. And then we have resources set up, like put basically like build this mentorship, uh, this mentorship mo model out for women, basically like helping them understand what is the next step after you, know, you wanna get involved who do you need to go to to learn a little bit more? Are there um, an ecosystem of women or men who have volunteered to maybe come alongside anybody who wants to be onboarded, um, whether that's through Twitter spaces or anything like that? So um, I, I sent you a couple of dates, but if anybody's interested, please like put in the chat. Uh, we can, I mean, I mean, I, I'm, I'm inclusive. I didn't know what you thought about that, but I just wanted to bring that up. Yes, thank you. Actually, I was very surprised to see Ali on Twitter and the, that there is another um, someone else that is uh, running a Twitter account, uh, which is Cardano Women and have around 1000 women, which is a great a whole new wo uh, world. Uh, so I think this is great. Um, I've noticed Marie uh, raised her hand a while ago. Uh, Marie, if you want to join and Yes, I, I would like to say that I find this idea about mentorship really interesting and I like this. And I think that should be cumulated with a global change. Uh, we should take time, I think. And I will be interesting to ask you, what, why, um, what do you think? Why there is not a lot of women here? Why are the reasons, in your point of view, uh, as a woman and as a man? Because I think, and in a deep way, because I think this is where we can start also to to see where we can make the change. And yeah, I, I would like to ask you this, or I don't want, maybe you, you want to ask all the questions, but I, I, I think for me, it's important to, to have this feeling because for example, Juliana, you make uh, the you make um how can I say technical stuff <laughs> for me <laughs> that I find wonderful and for me it's really it's really hard to to be able to do this and I would like to have your feedback about what is um, that was hard for you to be in this uh, world of men because before I make construction, for example, and I know what is it to be a woman uh, with many men around you and look at you, oh, you can carry the stone, it's great. <laughs> and so I, I would like to know what, what, what are the reasons for you um, why the women are not here? If it's because they are not enough accepted or it's more because the women are not so much attracted by it it's my question uh do you need to, need to answer or not do you want to share your thoughts no no yeah, i just I want the to ask for me <laughs> no no, no for, for for everybody who okay. have answer yeah. or yes. uh, okay i will then share my thoughts uh, so for me, I don't think uh, men don't support us. I think it's uh, the opposite way. So men, especially the men in Cardano community, they're such a huge supporters. Uh, for me personally, it comes uh, more from internal stoppers. So um, if we don't have the confidence to speak out, like nobody can push you uh, and nobody stops you. So I, I don't think here someone will stop me if i want to like lead or something it's exactly like the other way like uh, people encourage us to take action but i think it's um most most women that i've seen especially in technical fields uh, they have that kind of inner stopper that uh, they don't feel confident enough um and i don't know uh it's uh, for me it's inner inner stopper uh and if we encourage by uh, and inspired by example, by showing that someone else did it. Uh, for me, that is uh, that is the way uh, that we encourage um, 
action because uh, it should come from you. It should come from uh, your proactivity and your confidence and like nobody else, no, uh, not a man can build your confidence. Like it's a inner thing. And if you wait someone else uh, to build, I don't speak exactly for you <laughs> in general, um, if you wait, and, and that's not uh, only for women, it's for every person that I've seen, like uh, if you wait someone to push you to be proactive, <laughs> it's kind of okay. Um, that, that's not the way you should like, yeah, uh, it should come from your side. And um, uh, yeah, that's my opinion. If someone else has some other, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Um, my past life, I worked in a male dominated industry for a number of years and you climb the ladder and you gain respect and, you know, you just, it's, there's, there's a saying that, you know, women are, it's because of their own they go after the new promotions or the new jobs or they dip their toe into new industries um, when they feel like they're prepared versus a man who likes to think, oh, I have the potential. And so I feel like, I mean, especially for me, I, um, there was a book by Sheryl Sandberg called Lean In that really changed my perspective on speaking up um, and really it's having more of the confidence in yourself for your potential versus your experience. So, and I, and I also think women, it's not just Cardano, but blockchain in general, um, a number of my friends, I just think, you know, technically sound like, you know, the IT world is dominated as a male dominated industry. And when you're trying, when I'm trying to talk to my friends about, you know, my, my women friends about blockchain and getting involved, you know, their moms, they have jobs, they're raising kids, they're trying to, you know, so there's so many things. And, and right now, I think the opportunity is not only with, because of the pandemic has really changed people's minds about what their jobs are looking like, and people are taking more risks. I just think women haven't been as because the risk associated with putting all your time into something like this, I mean, this is a to learn it and to actually do something in this space takes a lot of time. Um, and it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of connecting with people and, and doing all of that stuff. So if a woman is not, if she doesn't have the resources to be able to do that and she's split in a couple of different ways because she has other accountabilities and responsibilities, um, so that's why I think it needs to be very simple. It needs to be broken down. And a lot of the tech, a lot of the language is very technical. And so having something that women can easily understand, um, and be able to be on board and not seeing other women faces in the space too, um, I think will help, but the men have been nothing but helpful and wanting you know, more involvement from women in this community. That's been my experience. Actually, I also remember the first time when I um, got involved with uh, programming and stuff. And uh, so I didn't know anything. Uh, I come from uh, landscape architecture background and design and that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, the guys that were teaching me, so they were developers and I was, so shy, so I didn't ask anything. And they were like, showed me some stuff and I didn't want to look stupid and to ask stupid questions. So they were explaining me some stuff and I was looking and I like, do you understand? Yes, I understand. And I, so I see that now uh, that I was obviously lying uh, that I understand because I didn't want to look stupid. And that uh, at that time was uh, um, like uh, for me uh, was, I don't know, I didn't, uh, because uh, I was a woman and that kind of, but I think that's the inner thoughts, uh, which are, yeah, I don't have these thoughts right now because um, I know that everyone has a different uh, um, expertise, different knowledge. You cannot uh, know anything. And I'm actually very proud to say that I don't know so many things. And so when I don't know something, I said directly, but that, uh, that was my first, um, when I was uh, younger, 
uh, I'm still young, <laughs> but when I was starting with the development stuff, uh, that was my stoppers. I just didn't want to, I didn't ask anything uh, because I didn't want to look stupid because, because I cared, I cared that people would judge me and that's, uh, that's changed now, uh, but it takes time and it takes experience and uh, yeah. Um, Angela, I'm very curious to know your opinion because uh, I know that you have uh, kind of experienced uh, different uh, different uh, challenges. Yeah, and also joys, but it's been pretty crazy as an experience. Uh, I uh, joined as a British pioneer in cohort two, and I'm a, a Tala prison pioneer. And There's something that goes on in this these sort of meetings where usually men uh, speak very technical language in a macho who's manlier than who kind of competition, in my humble opinion. And they'll say a confusing thing and only the people who know what they're talking about can continue with the conversation. And so that's a very... Uh, challenging uh, ring to enter. <laughs> and it's done on purpose and it's done to exclude. And so our energy possibly, I don't know about you guys, but the energy where you talk in a language that most people can understand what's going on, uh, that's not very catalyst <laughs> um, as, in in my humble experience. So it's an exclusionary, it's, it's an exclusionary, is that a word? It, it is made to exclude, I feel, and it's, it's made for only the sharpest, brightest, most intelligent, um, usually coders, or that's the, the area that I entered into. Um, in order to thrive in that environment, for every one hour of conversation you manage to listen to, you have to do seven hours of research. And so <laughs> just keeping up is a full-time job. Uh, that's been my experience. Yeah, no, I totally agree with, oh, I see a hand up, sorry. Yeah, so, um, and so what you're saying, I completely agree on. Um, early on, right? before open source came along, there was a term in the industry that you built your entire technological company around. And the term was, there's margins in mystery. Okay. And what that means is the more mystical, the more mystery in the technology and everything else, the more margins you could charge. And so, all of a sudden, if you take a look at what happened with open source, when it actually started to not just begin, but as it started becoming a lot more transparent, as it moved into the industry phase, even it started taking on this uh, mysterious mystique to it. Um, and so, um, and, and so, so there's still a lot of people that I believe in the business world and also in other things, believe that there's this ability to make margins and mysteries as opposed to helping facilitate that transition phase that I talked about earlier. Those people that understand how to help transition and make it easier for other people to make that move are the people that are going to succeed through every one of those phases moving forward. Whether they utilize the creativity structure, whether they utilize a, um, an environment where it's training or teaching, but the ones that are building the foundation to remove the mystery are the ones that are gonna find a lot of success. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because there's a lot of people inside of Cardano who are basically asking a lot of the same questions just in their own way. How do I get involved? How do I, um, what can I bring to the table? 
And some people are looking for others to help them understand that while they're still trying to figure out the answer for themselves. And this is that part of the cyclone that happens in the community structure. One of the reasons that, um, that I truly believe that Cardano, and I've, and I've looked at the other ecosystem type structures, the reasons that I believe that Cardano is gonna be the successful structure is, is that you can get as small and focused as you want to in Cardano because of how they separated their technology structure and how they're now setting up the deployment of being able to enable creativity and functionality. Right now, everyone's running after the NFTs. Everyone's running after the DEXs. Everybody's running after all the things that the market is saying to run after. But the reality is when you start taking a look at where the future, I personally believe Cardano is going to succeed is in that embedded small focused and niched market environment that makes it easy for people to understand. Um, I will relate again, another conversation that I had with some of the people that I work with in the financial markets. They do not care about governance. They do not care about um, how is Cardano in relationship to these other products. What they wanna know is what is the business model and how can I take the company that the companies I've funded or the people that I've put in place, how can I migrate them to what you're saying is important? That transition, that migration, those are the questions that I'm being asked outside that Cardano space. And so education, transitioning, removing the mystery, removing the big words, removing all of those things, though that is what's going to make the difference in the success moving forward, in my opinion. Um, I mean, for example, and, I, and again, I'm using back in the days of the open source. How many, I mean, imagine what's happened, right? Open source didn't exist and everything was copyrighted and you made money on everything. And then we came up with this term, copy lefted. That term never existed. We came up with the term copy left it to explain what open source was all about just to try and help people understand. And again, we're in that same environment. So there are opportunities to, in my opinion, to define and create markets that have yet not even, we've not even really begun to consider just because of the way the technology is being built. So the, and, literally in the technology industry, and it still exists now, there is margins and mystery, meaning the more that you make it mysterious, uh, the mystery of it, the more money you can charge for it. And with open source and the transparency, that's dramatically changing. And now you have an organization that not only is opening it up, but they're wanting to open it up to enable the entire community to structure and help define it. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, say that again. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say. Um, I really like what you had to say. Some of it was very interesting, and it goes along with what. Oh my gosh, AWG! I know that you were the moderator in our in our catalyst um, in the the. Was it called the Fun Fest? So, but I, I forgot Fest. your, yes, yeah, so what idea fest, what was your name again? Angela, hey Dana. Angela, Angela, I was like, it's at the tip of my, tip of my head, but it also goes along to, with what Angela was saying too, with, you know, the, the technical language and, you know, purposely trying to, Honestly, the last couple of businesses that I helped startup wise, so I worked with the CEO of a startup company and a, a botanical extraction um, company. They do global consulting and they have equipment and they work in the cannabis industry. Well, so after so many months of working with this guy and the language is so technical and yes, they're all very smart. They went to very smart schools, but then we're sitting with clients 
who have a lot of money, who may be, you know, an oil guy from Texas who knows nothing about cannabis. And he just wants, he has $50 million. He wants to invest. He was trying to get information on how to 20 minutes into this call. The guy is like, can you, what's your business model again? Because the, like, sometimes I feel like people, when we're in these industries where there's a lot of technical language, sometimes, you know, it's not even just to keep women out. The language is so technical. The average person, you know, it's a barrier to entry. So being able to like what you said, translate it. So what I used to do for my boss and I had to re, well, I, I rewrote the whole sales deck for this company because I'm like, first of all, we need to, his name was Matt. I was like, we need to take the Matt speak and we need to translate it to a layman, you know, so that everyone understands. And I know that you want to say some of these technical things and, but when you're talking to an average person, they don't know what that means. You know, you want to systems and solutions and all these very like general terms, like what you're saying, but it also can shoot a company in the foot because nobody knows what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Like people are like, what do you sell? And I'm like, your consulting services and you, you know, you help out with equipment. And so breaking down, um, working with the company to actually find out the process and the equipment and, and, um, real life, like better descriptions for all of this stuff, you come to realize that even some of the things the terms within the company between the CTO and, you know, other people on the, on the executive board, they don't even have, they don't even have the same definitions. And I think that that's what's going on right now. So going back to what I said, and like Eric, I know he, he took his face off the camera, but um, I don't know if you were in here when I said, but me and uh, De Juliana want to get on a call to talk about, you know, creating a course for women to onboard them and talk about general blockchain. And I think with the catalyst, what it really needs, because the technical aspect, the general person doesn't need to know how Plutus runs or all of this stuff. But what we do need to make very clear is how, you know, somebody who's not technical, if they're not interested in like, like me, like I'm not gonna learn Plutus, you know what I mean? Cause that's, I wanna understand the capabilities of, of Cardano from like a different level. So, but what I feel like everybody in the ecosystem, even onboarding a new person needs to understand is the relationship between all the different arms of Catalyst. You know what I mean? Like if I'm new and I want to put it in a proposal, or if I'm new and I want to understand a little bit more about Cardano, where do I go? What is Catalyst, the, the entity you know, in relationship to Catalyst School, in relationship to Catalyst Circle, in relation to all the different parts of our ecosystem. I think that needs to be translated in like a really cool, you know, and Eric does a lot of visual work, right? With the art. And so I think De Juliana, like when we have our call, it would be cool to maybe have Eric participate in that too, because he can kind of like take some of the ideas we maybe have and put it in a visual form. Um, that we can have if some of these YouTube things, like if Allie wants to create, like she hosts the YouTube channel and like there's different people on that she's talking to. And then it also has like some visual cartoons or things like that. Um, so that's just one idea, but I totally understand what Dean was saying about the, the technical speak. It needs to be translated. And those are the people that are gonna do the best at onboarding communities and getting people involved. So that's my two cents. And uh, I'm gonna stick to it. Thank you very much. That is, uh, uh, yeah, that's, I, I think I agree. Uh, but I think that is uh, kind of uh, not a problem, but issue that we all do uh, in terms of like whatever, it, it doesn't matter if you speak about technical or if someone starts speak about financial stuff or marketing. So if, if that is not your field, if someone from the other side starts speaking in terms, um, and I think it's about it's more about the person. So if you want to look smart, yes, talk is in in terms, and uh, <laughs> that is the easiest thing. And uh, I don't think uh, if uh, yeah, I don't think that's the right approach. So if you really want the other person to understand you, then explain it in the normal way. And uh, I've seen many people that will um, intentionally 
digital uh, speaking terms, not only in technical, uh, just to look smart. Um, and that uh, it's uh, it's a personal personal approach. Um, Scott, was was your turn? Yes. Um, I when I had. Mm, I guess when I have my conversations, you know, when, when we're talking about protocols and, you know, the technicalities of, of blockchain and Cardano, I actually, I mean, I try to, uh, regardless of who I'm speaking to, I try to keep it like to where everybody can understand uh, what I'm talking about. I might not even use the proper language. I, like I might not call like I might not use slot, I might not use block or whatever, or forging or whatever, you know, um, the, the actual terms that all the documentation states. Um, and also, but I also think there, um, there's an issue with uh, the two things, like what Dean was saying is like, that's the mysterious part, you know, that's that part to where if you can't understand it, then it's mysterious and it, I might have a little bit of an aspect of it, you know, as far as mysteriousness of it. But the other problem, as far as I guess the core thing is like breaking it down in layman's terms, so to speak, like Dana was saying, is that that's going to be based on an end. That's an individual basis. That's that's like based on experience. Like, I don't know. And especially when you're dealing with like global on a global scale, like speaking to people that might be from Latin America, Asia they might not have the same experience when you're trying to break it down into say analogies or uh, some other descriptive for a particular item or topic. Um, but I, I do absolutely 100% agree with everybody as far as how it's being discussed. And yes, you do have that, uh, well, you have that I'm smarter than you type thing. Absolutely, I agree with that. It happens between uh, males, it doesn't matter who it is it's there's always somebody some people are i'm smarter than you this is how it is and i'm going to try and talk above you versus actually talking to you and but uh, i can't stay much longer and that's what i wanted to like say as far as trying to express the terms and relay the information I put my contact information in there. I don't speak in technical terms. If somebody's got questions, it doesn't matter who it is. It can doesn't matter if it's anybody in this group. If you know somebody that wants help with something that's blockchain related, uh, feel free to use that information I provided and hit me up. And I love this love this group. I hope we have it again next week. And Thank you for I hope joining. Everybody, hope everybody has speaking no terms, <laughs> speaking <laughs> normal way. <laughs> You're right, right. I hope everybody has a great week and uh, maybe see y'all in Swarm. Thank y'all take care. Yeah. Um, I want to take the discussion into a different direction, if you may. I, I, uh, I mean, we are trying, if we think what we are trying to build in Catalyst and Cardano, right? We are trying to build a new system which will create new types of governance, financial systems, and so on. So if we want to do that, and all of us are either here and spending so much time, I probably spend 15, 16 hours a day on this ecosystem now. So um, we cannot do it without having equality with women. I mean, let's start with that. If we, if we want to achieve that, and there's not 50, 40, 50, 60% women in the ecosystem, it will just not happen. Okay, so if, if we, and if we look, look on the ecosystem we have today, I mean, it's still very small. I mean, how many people we have today? 120 people in the town hall. We cannot have additional 50, 50 women in today's town hall that will be bring more, more or less equality to this situation. Uh, so that's one point that I wanted to make and, and why I think this is, issue is so important. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, I mean, yeah, it will take time for blockchain in general and so on, but it may be we need to focus on the young generation of, of uh, women. On the, you know, Vitalik was 18 when he created Ethereum, right? So why not focus on the 20, 22 years old, the uh, new generation of women, of young women, and focus on them and train them and attract them here. And um, anyway, that, that's my point. I, I, I think the, um, I cannot be anymore in rooms with 30 men only. I mean, it, it's just... 
I, I don't want to be in this room. Then all I mean, it, it's not. It's not. It's not what we want to build, in my view. What I want to be part of in a new environment, and um, and that's my point. So I think we need to make it happen, especially as we are small. We can still impact that now. Maybe in two years it will be much more difficult to impact that. And anyway, that's my point. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> that's very nice to hear. Uh, Nat, do you want to jump? Uh, yeah, I sorry, I lost connection a little while ago and then had to rejoin. So I'm now back to being Juliana in the name. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to go back to Marie's question about um, about you know why why we think we feel there are less why there are less women in Kadano and also why women may not feel as confident about participating in conversations or putting forward um, proposals or taking action on on their desires or intentions and I think this is something that you know we've observed in many other areas as well like my, my background is working with initially in finance which is very male dominated and then working in early stage startups for which I did for five years which is also very male dominated and then also spending a bit of time in the crypto space over the last five years and um and I think it really comes down to you know people draw aspiration um and also cues for how they're supposed to participate or engage with something from the environment and from the role models within within that environment and and i've certainly noticed you know for, for myself and women that i am around is that the way that women contribute to a environment or a community and, and how we draw confidence is different from men and and so being in an environment that's very, very male dominated you really as a as a woman you you have to really work hard to feel um confident to contribute and communicate and get validation from your environment and i think that's what what has happened you know it happened early on just in the work environment it's happened in tech and now it's happened in within the blockchain space as well um and so so for me the big desire is to like one help individuals women to 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 draw that confidence and their their that confidence and their ability to communicate and take action and i think mentorship is an exceptional way to do that because it's about relationships it goes far beyond just the image of like language or words it's about connecting really deeply with an individual which is very empowering and then the second thing is the environment and i think that's what we can really talk about as a as a group is like what needs to be done so that people don't that barrier uh, language is not a barrier or image is not a barrier that people can really say what they think without having to worry about how it will be received or how how other people think and feel um so that's that's where i really think the the opportunity is to rethink how how sessions are run how people present how we receive who we choose as a leader who we choose to support that type of thing that's my my view. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I think we all agree very much with you. Uh, and how you want to jump in? Yeah. Thanks, Natalie. And and also, I was really agreeing with what um, Yoram said. Uh, and this is exactly what. This is exactly what the deal is with Africa. There is 1.2 billion people with an average age of 19.7. Half of 1.2 billion is, oh, I can never do the billions to the millions. What is that? 0 0.6 billion? <laughs> is that completely wrong? I'm sorry. My point is there's a hell of a lot of young women um, in Africa, and these are women before, uh, they're, they're, they're still pre-motherhood at this point, and they're still pre, uh, and they're still able to be educated, and so that's exactly what the deal is with Africa, that's exactly, you know, where the money is, <laughs> and it's exactly what Charles saw, um, and so It would be a tragedy if all those women just grew up and 
and the system stayed the same and the patriarchy stayed the same. And, and so that's why this conversation is so important and that's why I'm choosing to take part because I don't have access to all of them, but I have access to a few. And they certainly do not speak the language that is currently spoken in Catalyst. Yeah, but in Catalyst, uh, just quick to reply to that, I mean, it's wonderful, Angela. And I think in Catalyst, they're actually, WADA is doing extraordinary also. I mean, there's a lot of, we see a lot of women coming from Africa. And the question is how we bring more, right? When you see great uh, initiative, great activities. And anyway, just wanted to say, continue that definitely. And how we bring more. Eric, you want to jump in? Can you guys hear me? Let me can try again. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, all I want to say is that uh, with blockchain, we are putting the, the money back in the hands of every individual. And the thing is that, you know, if women can be in control of their own money, I think that's a good step in the right direction. You, 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 want, you want to give more power to women that make them in charge of their own cash. You know, that's where you start. And, you know, and then if one woman makes more money than another man, well, they can be as pissed off as they want to, but they can't get to her cash. Problem today is that they can. You know, I mean, that's, it's a, it's a, and unfortunately, you know, we're living in a world where, you know, everything is accounting to men. That's, and I'm, I hate to say that. And I, I know I'm stereotyped, white, male, middle-aged, you know, I, I, you know, I go out in the street and I go, yeah, give this to me and they'll give it to me. And that's just the way it is. And it's very unfortunate. But, uh, you know, I, I want to make a, and I'm going to go on a, a little bit of rant here, but uh, I'm Swedish. So we obviously Vikings and all that kind of stuff. In the old days, they actually found Viking graves where, you know, they had keys to the food stores and the beer and all that kind of stuff. But the only one that had the key to those rooms were women. So the men have to go to the women to get their beer. And you know, that's the way it should be. You know, so uh, women needs to get their, their uh, wallets back, get your money back, your money, your power. That's where we start. Anyway, that was my two cents. Uh, that's and, and, I, and I'm sorry that, and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, I know we're talking, bringing you know, women into Cardano, uh, I'm just trying to get everybody into blockchain. You know, that's I, I'm I'm working at right now with with uh, an affiliate to NPR, which is you know here in the United States. I'm also uh, been in contact with a guy. Uh, you know, I don't want to really go into the TV TV sphere, but we have like local TV, and I think it's very important to just get this out to people. And if you get it out to the ordinary regular people then they will automatically just start bringing other people and other women and walk with him, you know? So we, we can dig very deep into this if we want to, but my, my point is just spread the word, you know, get the love out there. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you, Nat, for joining. <laughs> um, bye, Nat. Uh, yes, Eric, that is a very, uh, very, very cool because uh, when you hear that kind of enthusiasm from someone and it's uh, it's empowering. <laughs> and I think I, I think you are very right, like uh, in terms of blockchain and technology, so we have to bring everyone. But uh, so in our case, uh, we are just focused on women because, yes, for many reasons. Uh, Dana, do you want to jump in? And then uh, I see actually Nadia, if Nadia, if you can jump in. Quickly introduce yourself. Do you want me to go right now? Um, doesn't matter for me. <laughs> then, uh, okay. Let the let the hand up go first. Oh no! So I was just gonna say, you know, I think that the way to mass adoption for everybody, you want to reach everybody, you got to get the women, because the thing is, is that purchasing power. If you look at retail purchases online all this it's like 
there more of this purchasing is happening through women. So you get the women, you get everybody. So that's why it's not about women versus men. It's about the fastest way to adoption is making sure that women can understand how all of this works and how they can be empowered through their families. And then it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna uh, snowball from there. That, that's what I think. The yeah. end. Uh, go on. I think someone started. Okay, Marie, they want to go. <laughs> no, we cannot hear you. We still cannot hear you. You're muted. <laughs> okay. I was thinking that, yeah, it was. Uh, was going to make a presentation, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just want to say that this is important to speak about number, increase the number of, of women. But I think for me, quality is always uh, the, something really important. And when I look on the woman, on all the past <laughs> of the women in my family, wow, I don't know you, but really for me this is they have had a really hard really life with right? many exactly domination way, things and many hard I stories and i feel today we need to healing things that by a quality of exchange and i don't know how to say it i have no the solution for the moment but i know that the women need to <laughs> healing <laughs> themselves so much, but first i need to Healing say, yeah, the story of my family. Is, if I want to feel confident and, and able to to be equal, um, and I feel this at first in each of us because I think the the woman what they have living in my family it's one of the most important part where I haven't feel confident for a long time in uh, in my life, and I think yeah. I, I have this this more healing things is trying to to make a difference that if you are a woman you are not less but sometimes when you grew up as a woman and I speak for myself and that was a mistake but I have feeling less and I think it's not normal but for a long time I feeling that was normal and Tommy so Ellison's I need to theology. make more I need to prove that Something I can make things and, and, and when I say this that make me emotion because I'm never the first one to speak about women <laughs> I'm working women, but it. <laughs> it's inside us and we need to <laughs> to change it uh, and yeah I have a lot of uh, philosophical uh, thinking about men and women because I think we are the two inside of us but yeah something must be changed in terms of quality uh, human quality this is just what I want to say and yeah not I think number is important but so much for me. not so much for me it's much more the quality and if you feel confident and yeah, uh, that we can turn the page and say, oh, we don't need to struggle, man, woman. This is so <laughs> a long struggle <laughs> for some years. So it's a, it's a, it's a so long time ago. So. So in that case, for example, yeah. it's much more, I would say. <laughs> Just what I want to say. Marie, I just got an idea from what you were saying. I would... I think a part of like whatever we do, did Juliana, like with putting together something to help onboard women or bring them on. I think that you just brought up a very, and, and you've said this before. I think you said this last week as well, bringing the human, the human aspect of a person's journey into block, like not like remembering that we're still all humans and we have backgrounds and we have history and we have the reason why we are who we are I think a part of what we do is help share and I know that it's you know you were getting a little emotional and that that's so I mean 
it's inspiring, but I think vulnerability is so important in this conversation to onboard people that it's okay. Like maybe even sharing stories of how, you know, women got into blockchain or sharing stories of like, I would love to hear. I mean, I don't know if you're um, maybe not today, or if you would want to do this in a public forum, but I would love to hear some of the stories of your, you know, some of these women in your family that you're talking about and why, you know, because those that brings humanity into the story and it allows people to have a human connection to this like technical thing. It's not about the technical thing. It's about the people and like what people have gone through. And once you see the contrast between what people have gone through and what the possibilities are and that there's connection in that, like you sharing what you just shared, like I feel a connection to you. Cause like my heart is now, you turned on the emotional part of me. And so now I, I like, I want you to be a part of like the conversations that we have outside of this breakout session. Cause I think that it's super valuable that, that you keep reminding us to go back to the humanity part of it. You know, I think that's so important. So thank you for sharing. I would love to hear. I think these are the types of things, even Angela, like some of the stories from where she's at, like learning the stories of women or people in our histories and why we are who we are and why this is a reason why we're interested in this technology. I think it's super important. Yes, uh, yeah, and uh, Megan shared very, uh, very important point. Megan, do you want to join the conversation? Or if you cannot speak, uh, yes, she is uh, said that vulnerability and emotion are so valuable and so deeply lacking oftentimes from fintech bro. Uh, yeah, I think we all miss this humanity part especially uh now where we are only collaborating through zoom and uh, it, it is very difficult to share your um, vulnerabilities with uh, someone that you don't know uh but i i think it's a must must to do right there. Nope, uh, you're muted. Thanks. Um, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I was saying I'm so glad that you guys are still here. I um, was committed to another group, unfortunately, and so I wish I had been here the whole time, but um, I'm glad you're still here. Uh, I just, um, I've been thinking a lot about this since your last, um, our last session, Juliana, and um, just our our calls in between. And um, I've been thinking, so I'm here in, in Yosemite. Um, it's my husband's birthday and he wanted to come to Yosemite for his birthday for many years. And so here we are. And um, we're big into rock climbing. And one of, the, one of the stories here is people scaling El Capitan, which is, if you're not familiar with it, is one of the, big, one of the biggest granite rock faces that there is. And he and I always talk about how like the first, the first time they did it, it took them like three months and they like camped on the side of it and they put like bolts into it and it took them through. No one thought that they could do it, but once they did it, then the next people did it in like three days. And then Alex Honnold did it. Like he free climbed it without ropes. Um, but it was that sense of like the story of the accomplishment of it. And then it came alive for people in terms of something that would be achievable. And so I love that I came into a part where you guys were talking about um, this, the telling of the stories. And I think if we, if, if that is done, that alone, just we'll, we'll have it come alive for people as, some, as something that they can accomplish. And the diversity and the variety of those stories um, will probably have different outcomes. Um, even for me, even just coming into Catalyst and, and having each of you in different ways show me what work was being done was extremely helpful. 
I also am thinking that the the poetry, the unleadership poetry workshop, I just want to give another like super round of applause for because that was so wonderful to be a part of. And I think that another part of this could be, so we have this focus on bringing women in. And the other part might be just cultivating like feminine qualities that are very helpful in this industry that I think the lack thereof, like the sense of like everything must be done now and everything must be done immediately. Um, there's a real, the real tremendous value of having that balance of, of qualities within yourself. And even um, not just like representing that as a case, but having actual activities and events like you have been creating, like we've been creating as a group, that having them more frequently so that people can start to exercise those, especially for people who have like, you know, women can have super masculine traits that um, make life difficult for them. So that sense of like experiencing different parts of yourself as you are doing your work and being able to apply it um, may, might be something that, that we can do some more of so that um, people continue to come awake to just not uh, continually like beating their head against the wall with their own biases and ways of doing things and that they're able to become more balanced in that way within themselves. And then I would love, I, are you recording? Good. I would love, um, I want the link so I can watch everything that was talked about in case I just repeated yeah. anything completely. <laughs> we'll share it. Thank you for sharing. Andrea, yes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I completely, completely agree with you, Nadia. And I also happen to be a big rock climber, so please do it or take a photo and share. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> um, women in their roles as secretaries, in their roles as bookkeepers, in their roles as uh, keepers of the knowledge and the, you know, the ledgers, were the, for, the first form of computers. If we think about it from that perspective, which is just one perspective, but it is interesting to think that the technology that then became so male in the last sort of 20 to 50 years previously was a role played by a woman or many women. And perhaps with some work on the position of the thing, we could make that better. Yes, um, thank you for sharing. That is uh, actually very true, very good reminder. I will share a link to Wikipedia, women in computing and uh, actually women were uh, the first among the first programmers. And uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting to read more about in, uh, about that in Wikipedia. Uh, Dana, do you want to jump or your hand is up? Yeah, to um, just touch on Nadia, what you were saying about like, and also I know Marie touched on this with the different, um, sides of us, you know, women have male and female sides and, and so do men. And so ex in exploring those things, there's a book, I don't know if you've heard of it, but Dr. John Gray, he wrote the book, Women Are From Mars, Men Are From Venus. It's like one of the biggest, you know, sellers over the last however many years, 30 years. He wrote a book um, in conjunction with a, I forget her name, and I think I lent it out because it's not in my library anymore, but it's called Work With Me. And it explores the hormone, like the actual biochemistry behind the men and women. And in a professional setting, what are the strengths and the weaknesses, not to pigeonhole anybody to one side or the other, but just to in very, um, it like blew my mind when I was working for one of the, you know, back in the day, 
one of the bigger companies that I work for, I bought a bunch of these books and I distributed them among our team just so that we could all learn. And it was like an eye opener. So I highly recommend that book if there's going to be more discussion and um, kind of exploration about making people more aware of how men and women work together and like our biology behind that um, so that we have empathy for each other too. You know, sometimes it's like the, the intention is not, sometimes the intention is malicious, but most of the time we're, we just don't understand each other and, and how our biochemistry works. And um, then there's another book, it's called Beyond Mars and Venus. And I'm like, you know, I'm not saying I'm like this huge John Gray, but that book also took it to another level because that was just released a couple of years ago. And that goes even more into like the newest findings behind all the biochemistry um, stuff. And, and I mean, it is even just between relationships and men and women, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, intimate. It can be professional. It could be friendships. It can be anything. I mean, I literally like saved people's marriages just because they're like, oh my gosh, or, you know, my friend, people, you know, their, their friendships were saved because of this book. And so I think just educating ourselves more on those differences that you're talking about is super important. So it's work with me is the one title of the book and the other one's called Beyond Mars and Venus. If anyone's interested. Thank you for sharing, very helpful. Yes, I think it's important to educate ourselves on that kind of topic. Uh, okay, it's uh, one hour and 30 minutes. Um, I don't know about you guys. <laughs> it's, it's quite long now and I would prefer just to um, end this meeting and uh, have another session maybe next week or continue in Discord because it's too long now. <laughs> one quick thing before we get off. Yeah. Angela, I don't know if you have the chat open or whatever, and, and it's okay if you don't want to participate, but I would love to get your email if you want to participate in a call that we're doing like outside of this, outside of this breakout session to kind of put action steps to some plans so that it's not just always us talking. And you too, Nadia, if you want to put your email in the chat. And then can you share the book as well? Maybe ask. Yes, I'll put it here. Thank you everyone for joining these discussions and supporting the topic. <laughs> I hope you, you enjoyed. Much. If you think how, if you think about any other topics, questions related, very welcome. Thank you for hosting Juliana. Yes, thank you. Thank you. One second, don't shut off. I'm getting, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So everyone. I know, I know, I know I can go back and look at this. I'm just like, you can, um, if yeah. you're doing the chat, you can right click the little three little dots at the bottom, do save chat, and that'll oh. give you everything. Hello. Okay. Oh, I know. I, I figured that out. And I was like, this is much more, this is much easier on my hand. <laughs> and then I just realized yeah. I only sent the book stuff to Angela. So here you go, everybody. There. Save chat. Perfect. Cool. Where does it save to? It should save to your desktop, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. And if it doesn't, then you have our email and I'll email too. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you guys. It's been uh, educational much. again. <laughs> I, 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 I pop in like this because I, I get some information and I actually I do what you do. Sometimes I save this or go back to the videos because I use some of these materials when I have the podcast with the, with the radio station. So I go in and take bits and pieces. And uh, this, this whole thing about bringing women to Cardano, although I, I, I have to be honest, I'm not going to just say women in Cardano, I just want women in the blockchain sphere. I will probably use some of these things that is popping up. Very educational. Thank you, guys. That's great. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> we can continue. Great. OK. Yeah. Bye, cool. guys. Thank Angela, you I'm going to, I'll take a pic and send it so you can see Bye. the rock. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.